Hello, friends, and welcome back to another episode of The Seditionists. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here with my friend Rob Furman up in Pennsylvania. This is Keith Reeves here in Virginia. And uh, you know this from watching us um, or from uh, listening to any of the addresses that we've given either ind individually or together, that both Rob and I are former music educators. Um, I often say that music education is one of the best preparations to be a school leader because you have to have your fingers on the pulse of everything. I was interviewed by a Yorktown student recently um, who said, uh, you know, Mr. Bursch, our band director, is basically the assistant activities director, whether he wants to be or not, because he's got so much going on. I was like, brother, do I understand that from firsthand experience? And as a consequence of being music educators, we were very interested in the authorization, the, the final language that went into the ESSA, the Elementary Schools uh, Secondary Schools Act, which is basically the replacement for No Child Left Behind. If you were around for NCLB, you know that it basically drove a wooden stake right into the middle of school community and music programs. Um, really sad stuff where we were entirely losing our focus on the traditional liberal arts basis of education in this country and just started going myopically and, and in a blinder-like fashion towards math and science, math and science, nothing else. No one in this conversation wants to denigrate any content area. Every content area has validity. But it is exactly that that the ESSA has gone and fixed by saying once again that art and music are absolutely core subjects. You don't have to look any further than any Greek textbook to see that we've known this for thousands of years, but we've finally gotten that back in America. Um, so we can start having serious uh, rebuilding of our music education capacity uh, in this country. Rob, what are the conditions like in Pennsylvania um, when it comes to music education these days? Well, we definitely took a hit just like just like everyone else. Um, it's Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, southwestern Pennsylvania is uh, a hotbed for football, Friday night football. I mean, it was if, if you're talking about high school football, you're talking about southwestern Pennsylvania. So the marching band was always a, 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 a wonderful uh, music integration into those Friday night weekend community involvements. And uh, it was really interesting to watch as No Child Left Behind continued to grow, how much the band would just dwindle almost to nothing. You would go from bands you would see with two, three hundred kids on the field down to twenty, thirty. Um, so it really was was a, just just a devastating blow to the music programs uh, all across the area. And 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 you know they always say hindsight's twenty twenty. And you know when when you think back. You know, the No Child Left Behind Act started in, in 2000, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, th those are our adults now. The ones that didn't have any music program, were, were, were never taught to, to love the arts, to, to appreciate the arts and those type of things. Um, th I really, truly believe that, that they are the people who are very bitter right now because because our government forced us to get into that No Child Left Behind. And I mean, we haven't talked about self-esteem in decades. You know, so all of this negativity that's been going on, you know, we've reaped what we've sowed. And, and now we're dealing with a community of very bitter, very unhappy people. And I think our current elections are showing a lot of that, which is a very interesting correlation as well. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just talked with, uh, again, in our, one of our earlier episodes, we were talking about Ubisoft and uh, VH1 Save the Music, and they're doing a lot of great stuff together. Um, while I was writing this article for VH1 Save the Music, uh, it was really interesting because uh, a lot of the Ivy League schools, the Harvards, the Yales, and a lot of the, uh, the, the schools over in Asia who, who deal a lot with medical stuff, that they require kids to take an instrument. Um, because of the not only the eye-hand eye coordination, but the organization it takes. The, the I mean, you're learning a foreign language in effect when you're reading those those notes and things like that. And and the, probably one of the most frustrating things for me, and you see it all the time with our government, is science proves it's important, but yet the government just seems to, t to turn a blind eye, almost like we don't care what the scientists say. We don't think it happens, so it must not be true. Uh, climate change, you know, the, all the scientists are saying, <laughs> look, it's happening, and, and they go like, they, they almost do like the five-year-old. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> that doesn't change the science. Okay. Yeah, it's, 
Uh, Daniel Patrick Moynihan said, you're entitled to your own opinion, but you're not entitled to your own facts. And people seem to be obsessed with closing out uh, anything that doesn't comport with their understandings of the world, even if it is a totally unlettered, unresearched, unsupported opinion. I have uh, had conversations in the past um, with parents, for example, this was quite a, a long time ago, the example that comes to mind, you know, I was a doctor and my father was a doctor and his father was a doctor and I want my kid to be in the science class so I don't have time for your music class. I said, sir, the research says that if you want your kid to go to med school, the number one accepted un uh, major that comes before that undergraduate major is music. So you will literally help your kid do what you're talking about doing by putting them in the band program. Let's also step back for a second and say that we know how well music education allows students to develop their natural skills, modalities, personalities, and identities, and maybe your kid doesn't want to be a doctor. Maybe it's not about what you want. No, 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 that's my universe. That's what I believe. The additional research that goes along with music education, we can provide example after example after example of the problem solving skills, critical thinking skills, different ways of thinking, the correlations between performances and quote unquote hard disciplines, I hate that terminology, and music. But music stands of its own accord. It is a functional part of the human experience all the way back to our earliest period. We know roughly Neanderthals have been around for 50,000 to 75,000 years or so, right? That was the Neanderthal period. Homo sapiens has been around for the rest of the time. You can make the argument about 125, 200,000, but we know that early humans have been around for tens of thousands of years. We have examples of bone flutes that have been found in archaeological digs where if you reassemble them, there's strong evidence to su suggest that it's do, re, mi, fa. It is not inaccurate to say that it is in our DNA to be musical. It is part of what makes us who we are. And understanding musical phenomenon helps us understand not only the way we think, but where we come from and who we are. That is not an irrelevant thing you stick on the side to put on a resume. That's the core of studying any discipline. Absolutely. And, and also another interesting uh, fact to go along with the bone flute was that um, if, if you do any sort of uh, reading on early linguistics, they say that, that, that uh, Neanderthal, cavemen, whatever you want to call them, uh, did not speak first. Their first method of communication was song singing, mm -hmm. vocalizing. Um, so, so, so the idea of the vocalizing and, and, and vocal harmony, things like that, uh, it truly is embedded in us. Um, and, and again, it's just so frustrating that people just feel like they can just simply look at it, look at the facts and go, eh, I feel like ignoring those that they must not exist and, and that be okay. Um, so, you know, I think the moral of this story is I'm glad it's coming back. Um, we need to push the programs. Not only, not only the music program, but the arts programs, the dance programs, all, you know, all of those fine arts, I guess they call them, um, because that's that that that's where beauty lives, and that's where and that's where appreciation, you know, happens, and that's where all of those things that that I, I would say are the, the community of today is lacking because we just completely raped it out of the out of their system for the past 15 20 years now and uh, it's time to bring it back I wish I knew the quote of, of uh, I think it was one of the presidents it said something to the effect of uh, if, if we get rid of art and music what do we have left to fight for you know, that it was <laughs> one of those type of uh, what's the point uh, of living if we don't have the, the things that make America beautiful. Uh, Keith, I'll let you wrap this one up, buddy. I think that nails it. We can teach all of the quote unquote core subject material that we want. You can teach the scientific side of the house, the mechanisms of, of the what, um, and you can examine and, and dismantle things and find out the how, but the arts are the core of understanding the why. It's the human side of the equation that we have seen example after example throughout human history. When that, when the why is taken out, when the art is taken out, when the humanity is taken out, we have seen the atrocities that humans are capable of. So I think we have not only a professional, but a moral responsibility to make sure that the arts remain a core part of every child's education. You, you hear these things here more than any place else, my friends. Once again, my friend Rob Furman, I'm Keith Reeves. Happy to have another episode of The Seditionists. See you guys again soon.